I've just started empirical formula with my year 12s this week and there was a little bit of uncertainty as to when do you round and when do you multiply out. So I've made this hopefully to help. Okay, so just a quick reminder of the steps. So the first thing you do is you put the mass or percentage of each type of atom. I normally construct a table. So you've got a column for each atom. You then calculate the moles of each type of atom by dividing by the relative atomic mass. And then you divide all of the moles that you've got by the smallest amount of moles and that gets you the ratio. So some examples coming up now and we'll look at when you can round up or down and when you can multiply out. Okay, so this one here, you've got an oxide of manganese and we've got the masses of manganese and oxygen. What's the empirical formula? So mass of each type of element, that goes in there. The moles to three significant figures calculated by dividing the mass by the relative atomic mass. So we get 0 0.100 and 0 0.200. So the ratio is obviously 1 to 2. So we divide both numbers, both moles, by the smallest of the moles. So it's obviously that one there. And that's an exact number. So it's obvious that you don't need to round because you've got whole numbers anyway. So it's MnO2 would be the empirical formula for that. So that's the simplest whole number ratio of each type of atom in the compound. So for the second question, I've gone for percentage data now. So it's the same method. So we just put the percentages in this time. Calculate the moles by dividing by the relative of atomic mass. So we get those numbers there. And then we divide by the smallest of the moles. So obviously that one there. And we get a 1 to 3.92 ratio. So because this is so close to the next whole number of 4, it's okay to round. Okay, so it would be SiCl4 for that one. For the last one, we've got an oxide of phosphorus now. So same method, masses go in, moles to three significant figures, divide by the smallest, we get a 1 to 1.5 ratio. So sometimes students would round that up to 2. That's not allowed because that's too far away from the whole number. In the previous one, it was really close to the whole number. This is too far away. So what we would do is multiply out, so multiply by 2, it'll give us a whole number there, we'll get a 3, so we'll get a ratio of 2 to 3, so it's P2O3 would be the empirical formula for that one. So when do you round and when do you multiply out? You round if it's very, very close to the whole number. So I would say as a rule of thumb, no more than 0.1 away. When do you multiply out? It's going to be obvious. So if it's a something 0.25, you'd multiply out by 4 to get the whole number. If it's a something 0.33, you multiply by 3. And if it's something 0.5, like we had in the last example, you multiply out by 2. So hope that helped and you'd never get them wrong anymore.